On this section, we will be talking about the big O notation. Algorithm analysis, the big O notation. So just as a program is analyzed before writing an algorithm and the computer program, after an algorithm is designed, it should also be analyzed. So usually, there are various ways to design a particular algorithm. So certain algorithms take very little computer time to execute, whereas others take a considerable amount of time. Now let us consider the following problem here. So the holiday season is approaching and a gift shop is expecting sales to be doubled or even tripled the regular amount. So they have hired extra delivery people to deliver the packages on time. Okay, so the company calculates the shortest distance from the shop to a particular destination and hands the route to the driver. Now, suppose that 50 packages are to be delivered to 50 different houses. So the shop, while making the route, finds that the 50 houses are one mile apart and are in the same area. Okay. Now, in this figure, figure 1 does 1, in which each dot here represents a house and the distance between houses is 1 mile. Okay, so to deliver 50 packages to their destinations, so one of the drivers pick up all 50 packages, drives 1 mile to the first house and deliver the first package. Then he drives another mile and delivers the second package drives another mile and deliver the third package and so on so figure two here or figure one does two illustrates this delivery scheme so it now follows that using the scheme the distance driven by the driver to deliver the packages is one plus one plus one 50 times okay equals to 50 miles so therefore the total distance traveled by the driver to deliver the packages and then getting back to the shop is 50 plus 50, making it 100 miles. Okay? Now, another driver has a similar route to deliver another 50 set of packages. So the driver looks at the route and then deliver the package as follows. So the driver picks up the first package drives one mile to the first house and deliver the package then comes back to the shop next the driver picks up the second package drives two miles delivers the second package and then returns to the shop okay now the driver then picks the third package drives three miles delivers the package and comes back to the shop and so on so figure 1 does 3 here illustrates this delivery scheme. So the driver delivers only one package at a time. So after delivering a package, the driver comes back to the shop to pick up and deliver the second package. So using this scheme, the total distance traveled by this driver to deliver the packages and then getting back to the store is basically 2 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on until 50 that is equivalent to 2550 miles now suppose that there are n packages to be delivered on n houses and each house is one mile apart from each other as shown okay so if the packages are delivered using the first scheme the following equation gives the total distance traveled. Okay, you've got 1 plus 1 plus 1 until n times, okay, equals to 2n miles. Okay, so this would be our equation 1 plus 1. Now, the second scheme, if the packages are delivered using the second method, so the distance traveled is 2 times 1 plus 2 plus 3 until plus 50 equals 2 times n n plus 1 divided by 2 making it n square plus n so this would be our equation 1 does 2 
Now, in equation 1 does 1, we say that the distance traveled is a function of n. Okay? Now, let us consider equation 1 does 2. In this equation, for large values of n, we will find that the term consisting of n square will become the dominant term and the term containing n will be negligible. In this case, we say that the distance traveled is a function of n square. Okay? Now, I have here table 1 does 1. So, various values of n, 2n, n square, and n square plus n. Now, this table evaluates equation 1 does 1 and 1 does 2 for certain values of n. So, the table also shows the values of n square. Okay? Now, while analyzing a particular algorithm, we usually count the number of operations performed by the algorithm. So we focus on the number of operations, not on the actual computer time to execute the algorithm. So this is because a particular algorithm can be implemented on a variety of computers and the speed of the computer can affect the execution time. However, the number of operations performed by the algorithm would be the same on each computer. Now let us consider the following example here. Okay, so consider the following algorithm. Assume that all variables are properly declared. Okay, so let me use a marker here. Okay, so let us identify the number of operations per line. So on line one, so see out, enter two numbers. So you've got one possible operation. Okay, on line two, see in num1 and num2, okay, so you'll have two possible operations, okay, now on line 3, okay, if num1 is greater than or equals to num2, so making it having one operation, okay, comparing num1 and num2, next, line 4, line 4 has one operation, setting the maximum equals to num1. Okay? Next, line 6 has one operation. So take note that line 5 you have else there. Okay? So let's jump to line 6 first. Line 6 max equals to num2. So line 6 has one operation. And line 7, you've got C out. The maximum number is, you've got the second, the Okay, and the third, you've got three operations here. Okay, now either line four or line six executes because of the else conditions there. Okay, now therefore, the total number of operations executed in the preceding code is equals to, you've got three, four, five, six. So you've got nine. Take note that either line 4 or line six, uh, line 6 executes, right? So line 4 or line 6, so making it only 8. Okay? Now, in this algorithm, the number of operations executed is fixed. Now, consider the following algorithm here. Example 1 does 2. So this algorithm has 5 operations, okay? From line 1, to line 4. Okay, so there are 5 operations there before the loop or before the while loop. Okay, similarly, there are 9 or 8 operations after the while loop depending on whether line 11 or line 13 will be executed because you have the else condition there. Alright, now line 5, okay, through line 8 has 5 operations also. Okay? So, if the while loop execute 10 times, this 5 operations execute 10 times. Right? So, one extra operation is also executed at line 5 that is to terminate the loop. Okay? Therefore, 
the number of operations executed is 51 okay 51 from lines 5 to 8 now if the while loop execute 10 times the total number of operations executed is basically 10 times 5 plus 1 plus 5 plus 9 or 10 take note plus 1 okay plus 5 plus 8 that is basically 10 okay times 5 okay plus 15 or 10 times 5 plus 14 so we can generalize that the case when the while loop execute n times if the while loop execute n times the number of operations executed is 5n okay plus 15 or that would be 5n plus 14 so in these expressions for very large values of n the term 5n becomes the dominating term and the terms 15 or 14 becomes negligible now suppose that an algorithm performs function of n okay basic operations to accomplish a task where n is the number or the size of the problem now suppose that you want to determine whether an item is in the list moreover suppose that the size of the list is n okay so that is the size of the list now however the basic method is to compare the item with the items in the list so therefore the performance of the algorithm depends on the number of comparisons okay so thus in the case of search n is the size of the list and function of n becomes the function or the count function that is function of n gives the number of comparisons done by the search algorithm okay now suppose that on a particular computer it takes c units of computer time to execute one operations okay c units of computer time to execute one operation thus the computer or the computer time it would take to execute is function of n okay operations is c function of n okay so clearly the constant c depends on the speed of the computer and therefore varies from one computer to computer or to another computer however the function of n the number of basic operations is the same on each computer okay so if we know how the function of n grows as the size of the problem grows we can determine the efficiency of the algorithm okay now consider table one does two here okay it shows how certain functions grow as a parameter n that is the problem size grows suppose that the problem size is doubled okay so from this table here it follows that if the number of basic operations is a function of n which is equals to n raised to 2 okay the number of basic operations is quadrupled okay take a look at those that's quadrupled now if the number of basic operations is a function of function of n is equals to 2 raised to n okay the number of basic operations is squared something like if you have 1 squared 2 4 4 16 and so on so however if the number of operation in a function of n is equals to logarithm 2n so the change in the number of basic operations is insignificant okay now suppose that a computer can execute 1 billion basic operations per second so table 1 does 3 here shows the time that the computer takes to execute function of n basic operations so this is in one microseconds equals to 10 raised to negative 6 
and 1 milliseconds that would be basically or 1 millisecond is basically 10 raised to negative 3 seconds okay now the figure here figure 1 does 4 shows the growth rate of the functions of table 1 does 3 all right so the remainder of this section develops a notation that shows how a function of n grows as n increases without bound so that is we develop a notation that is useful in describing the behavior of the algorithm which gives us the most useful information about the algorithm so first we define the term asymptotic okay so what is asymptotic okay so let f be the function of n okay by the term asymptotic we mean the study of a function of f as n becomes larger and larger without bound so consider the functions g of n is equals to n raised to 2 and function of n is equals to n raised to 2 plus 4n plus 20. so clearly the function g does not contain any linear term that is the coefficient of n in g is zero okay now consider table one does four here okay so clearly as n becomes larger and larger the term 4n okay plus 20 in the function of n becomes insignificant so the term n raised to 2 becomes more dominant term okay so for large values of n we can predict the behavior of a function of n okay so that is by looking at the behavior of g of n so in algorithm analysis if the complexity of a function can be described by the complexity of a quadratic function without the linear term we say that the function is okay o n raised to 2 all right o n raised to 2 that is what you call big o of n raised to 2 so let f and g be real valued function assume that f and g are non-negative that is for all real numbers n function of n is greater than or equal to zero and g of n is less than or greater than or equal to zero also all right so let's have the algorithm analysis so definition we say that function of n is big o of g of n okay written function of n big o g of n okay if there exists positive constant c and n sub zero such that function of n is less than or equals to the cg of n for all n is greater than or equals to n sub zero okay so again if there exists positive constant c and n sub zero such that the function of n is less than or equals to cg of n for all n is greater than or equals to n sub zero now table one does five here show some common big o functions that appear in the algorithm analysis okay so let function of n equals to the big o g of n where n is the problem size okay so that's the big o notation that is being used in algorithm analysis